welcome everybody. Uh, people are still kind of trickling in. We're just gonna go ahead and get started with our artist talk with Doris Walker. So hey. what up? <laughs> welcome, welcome. So yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, kind of his. You can see some artwork behind him from his Black Lives Matter series, which is live right now on our official website. We have our first interactive digital exhibition, and we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about the process behind it, the thoughts about things going on, <clears throat> and a little bit of anything and everything in between. First, you know, for those I don't know, me and Arish go really far back, uh, say what, like ninth grade? Around there. Yeah, yeah, right around there, right around eighth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. Ah, uh, it was ninth grade because I was still in California in eighth grade. So, oh yeah, ninth grade, yeah, because you weren't sure which high school you were gonna like switch to and all this. Yeah, stuff. ended up going to Liberty High School and then you were Rampart and then I went to Pine Creek and met through you know our other homies Brian and Paris and whatnot and you know we've been homies ever since and like like I've always mentioned like. I don't remember you doing a whole lot of art in high school. I remember you drawing something <laughs> like that. And then I just remember coming up from college. You're like, yeah, well, you know, I'm studying art now. You know, just, and ever since then, we kind of just been rocking with each other on, on the website and everything else. Yeah, man. I mean, I was always nice, man. I just, uh, I always just had a sketchbook. It was something I did on the side, bro. Like, like my freshman year, that, that same year, actually, I got my, um, I won my first award in art. Like, I got first place in the art show my freshman year at Rampart. And then I never took art class until my senior year again. <laughs> but I would just keep the, the sketchbook in the time. Yeah, uh, I remember you doing like some sketches. I think it was maybe some portraits and also some like uh, like musicians and artists and, and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. I drew like Kanye and like- yep, no. Wayne and all that stuff. Yeah, I remember yeah. those. And then, you know, and, and here we are, you know, some what, 10, 10 plus years later and you know definitely it's definitely grown since then I mean, it's almost 20 now man like shoot that was that was like oh three so it's closer to the end of the second decade oh four yeah. oh three oh yeah. four it's getting there for sure <laughs> that's crazy but yeah um so i guess I don't want to start we'll just get right to it. Um, kind of how we came up with Black Lives Matters and, and whatnot, and kind of the thinking behind it. So I remember you kind of showing you posted some things on maybe Instagram or somewhere that I saw, or or actually you sent me a link to your website, and I I went to your updated website and saw that you had posted some of the series. And mm -hmm. you know, I for Live My Fears, we had been thinking about ways to actually kind of do our own sort of exhibitions particularly with everything that was going on and it just kind of happened to time up really perfectly where you were having you know and putting out that some of the newer stuff you did and we were looking to put out our own exhibition so it was timed up really perfectly right. and you know we kind of got together and we worked out a way to do it in a more interactive way and it, it like I said it was a perfect timing because everybody was inside and, and can't quarantine and whatnot and a lot of people in art weren't able to show the way that they wanted to or you know whatnot and I think this was a great outlet uh for you and for us and I think the response has been really strong and I don't know if you want to talk about kind of your thoughts about the online exhibition and how I don't know if you've done one of these before or not mm. yeah I mean it was really cool just like I mean me and you, like you said, we're talking about it, thinking about the online exhibition for a while and not so much like the work that we chose, but, you know, just as working on Living Life Fearless, we were like, yeah, you know, we should really figure out a good way to present artwork as a digital art show, you know, that, that isn't just like a image gallery. Um, cause that's basically what everyone does is just like slap a bunch of images and something you can slide through and you don't really take time to look at the artwork or engage with it, you know? So, uh, I think that was a challenge for us really at first was that, and then you, you know, figured out, um, a way to maybe slow people down and, and add more information. So, um, it, like you said, it was just kind of perfect timing cause, um, at the time, I was at that residency um, at the International Studio and Curatorial Program 
in uh, Queens. And that's where I really like started to develop the artwork um, for this series of Black Fathers Matter. Um, Cause basically for people who don't know this Black Fathers Matter series, I've broken up into um, many different parts. Uh, I've kind of even started the fourth series, but I can talk about that later. This is series two that we're discussing, which you can see behind me. And um, essentially I've been taking photographs of black fathers for over a year now here in the tri-state area. Um, and that all started from just thinking about, you know, my own life and uh, what leadership means and uh, what role models and um, black masculinity means. And um, yeah, that was sort of the impetus for the project. And, uh, you know, it started out as me using the photographs as reference images because uh, I'm not practiced um, or, you know, um, fully engaged in the realm of photography. Um, so I typically use it as references rather than my actual work. Um, but, you know, I'm engaged to a photographer who's amazing and she saw some of my images and thought that the pictures were good enough to actually be a uh, work instead mm -hmm. of just like the reference. Like, oh no, that's a really good photograph. You should think about showing the photo. And I was like, ah, oh. you know, and that, that sort of kept me spinning the wheels. It was like, I always thought about it, but it was nice to hear somebody else say, like, you could do it, you know? So yeah, basically give me a little push to um, try out this new series where it combines my medium of charcoal drawing with um, the images I've been taking over the past year. Yeah, can you kind of talk about that? Like, that was kind of what caught my eye immediately is like obviously we've been following your art and like your cardboard kind of work has always been stand out from what is already out there and then but to see you add so much color and like kind of meshing the photograph with everything else and all the different elements while still implementing that kind of cardboard you know element that has kind of become your signature like mm -hmm. what do you want to talk about kind of that medium change and like why you decided to go in a different direction with this one yeah i mean it's so interesting the uh i remember a lot of it comes from just like things i got to do when i was a kid i like a project that i started when i was really young when i was learning how to draw in class was taking a magazine photo and um drawing a grid over it and then you clip out certain parts of the grid and then you draw that square that you cut out so you keep the whole part of the magazine and then you draw out the little square that you have so it connects to it. And then you keep cutting it away and drawing it till you get to the whole image. And that was okay. one way I learned how to draw a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, so like that little exercise from like, you know, my teens sort of stuck with me. And instead of doing it like with a grid, I remember, oh, if I can just pick areas that I want to cut out and redraw those, it's almost like that, but it's doing it my way. So it's like, you know, it's really, there's a nostalgia in it, which is interesting in the way that the series is about, you know, um, childhood as well as fatherhood. So I think there's that interesting connection to my childhood and things that I hold on to that influence it. Um, but, you know, from, from that small spark of, oh, I can cut out the figures and draw it, um, there was also wanting to keep the connection of the cardboard and like what that really meant. And living out here in New York, um, you can really see, um, almost like this aesthetic of like, we see posters and things on the walls tattered and, you know, the, the, um, construction walls that say, um, post no bills, but then there's always posts of like concerts or, yeah. um, you know, lost dog or, or anything, you know, posted up and they, they kind of look like slightly torn away and weathered. Um, so that's kind of like an aesthetic that we're very used to. Yeah. And 
Um, I thought that also communicated the environment um, that exists for the uh, figures that I'm photographing. So that, that even just the way the object looks like when I'm tearing it and roughing it up like a piece of cardboard kind of looks like something you would just see on the street out here. Yeah, so there's like just a lot like more hidden meetings also like in in your work, which you kind of can delve into like through the exhibition. But right one point specifically, like most of the like you said, there are parts that are torn out like in the environment, but most of the figures are fully there except for the fathers. Like, do you want to talk about like why you cut out them specifically? Right. Yeah. So that's like the key um, element of this. Um, and and where most of the charcoal drawing actually occurs is where the father the father is cut out and um, I guess my reasoning for that was that it, it leads to a, a bunch of different questions as you begin to try to understand it um, you know if if the father isn't necessarily on the same you know plane or in that same area is he really there like with them what's that relationship really um you know because i don't want to i didn't want to fully imply knowing that these fathers are good fathers there's also the question of how much is the father there mm -hmm. or um them also relating specifically to the treatment of the black man um black men being treated like cardboard um like they're easily uh, replaced and disposable. So I wanted them to be um, one of the key references for the material. Um, so those are two reasons. And then also, um, the, there's, there's sort of an innocence in the photograph and an honesty and uh, historical fact in it. And, and the like, the photograph capturing the environment and the kids um, gives it a sort of historical validity where I'm not, I'm not really um, influencing how the figures are perceived. Like I'm not overdoing their gestures or anything. So it's, there's mm -hmm. less to be, um, I guess wondering how much is staged because all of these photos are, are candid. So like in a drawing, you can always wonder how much like artistic liberties were taken by the artist. Yeah. Uh, but in a photograph, some of that's taken away, um, especially in candid shots. So then when I combine the drawing, then that artistic liberty comes back in. And um, there's just a lot of different levels to what I like to play with in terms of how the viewer interacts with the material of the cardboard but in this work specifically the black male and what it what it means to be a, a leader as a black man um and i think that oftentimes they're treated like disposable objects it's deep and uh i mean you've always been kind of known for like i guess political social commentary imagery and like your art however like in whatever degree that you want to talk about it in. Um, but I think what struck me so like most about like this particular series was just kind of just how normal the images were. Like it wasn't like portraying some horrific event or some like trauma that's happened to us. So that's just like them right. being normal humans. And like, I guess even for me as a black person, like it, it even challenged me like, oh, like why do I feel like this is so different than what I've typically see you know what i'm saying because it shouldn't yeah. be that different like in your head you don't think it's like something strange because like i have my father i have images of my father just like this and like it's normal but right. like in like art and media it's something that still still feels so different than what's already out there or that's out there even though it's in such a like normal sense you know what i'm saying yeah not for sure. Like that's that's like why I felt like I should even pursue the project. You know, it's like because when you look outside, it's always it's confusing to like not see what you know is real. Like outside, you're like that's but that's not really how it is. Like you know, when you see like an ad, you're like ah, uh, or you see like you know characters, you're like I know this is like a comedy, but the way everyone else looks at it they're looking at it like it's real so now i'm a joke 
you know so yeah. like then then it's it, it, there's all these levels to like honesty and fact-based like representation so it's like can i can i just get a dad sitting on a bench like you know eating a snack with this kid or something just mm -hmm. having a casual combo there's nothing funny sad or important it's yeah. just just, that, just you know? chilling like, yeah, just walking with my daughter walking with their son like yeah. like in my in my mind like it shouldn't be that like shocking but it is almost like when it comes to artwork when how like black people especially black fathers are portrayed yeah i've like never seen and i mean honestly i feel like in the last say five years or even like this past year um that um notion of black fatherhood has become really important and has become like a big topic uh i see it all over now every day like i start seeing it more and more and i'm almost like oh did they jack that for me but no i'm just like like <laughs> obviously <laughs> obviously i'm not the first person to think about this but i i was able to recognize this importance and wanted to contribute to the conversation yeah um because you know it was ironic even I think today or yesterday, uh, Kara Walker, like the world famous, great mm, yeah. um, artist who um, I, with the photographer show, you know, you can see that. And also Living covered on Living Life Fearless. No. Yeah, go check out that. Uh, but <laughs> her work is so epic. She actually inspired me a lot to like be as fearless as I am with my representation. But she posted um, a, a cardboard sign that said Black Dads Matter. <laughs> today for Father's Day. <laughs> oh, okay. So like I was just like, oh shit. Like it's so funny how um just even that subtlety as yeah. as why I use the material as like a protest material and just like you know the ability to make statements about uh black people and black culture and just how it's used in real life is like I think contributes to, you know the reason why I do it. Yeah, I kind of want to touch on that, where you said fact-based representation. Like, that's kind of a, that's a point of contention in, like, a lot <laughs> of medium, surprisingly, well, not so unsurprisingly, is about, you know, people's calls for proper representation in, in TV, movies, film, art, you know? And it's just kind of a question, like, why do you think it's so contentious when it should be something that's normal? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what? It's well. That's funny. Fact-based representation. I think that's such a problem because of access. It's always been about like access and who's providing the, who has the platform. Like, where is it coming from? You know, like who's backing the presentation? How many people are? You know, the things that are reinforced come from people with an agenda or a certain stake in what they're trying to push out there mm -hmm. so if they don't necessarily see themselves reflected in something they might not be as adamant to push it or 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 care about it as much as the things they do see themselves reflected in so a lot of it i do think is just based on the lack of the ability for people of color to gain that real estate in um just like you know the industry itself that's slowly trickling in and that's why we're seeing a lot more um diversity develop and these conversations are are being allowed to happen more and more frequently mm. but um yeah I don't know. yeah i mean thinking about just how kind of contentious this is and how like how almost controversial it is this topic is even though it shouldn't be comes, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about this a little earlier when we were trying to advertise the exhibition online, specifically through Facebook. Um, I was having a really hard time even being able to advertise this exhibition because it said they're trying to say it was a social political issue. And it's like, right. wait, since when is fatherhood a social political issue? Like, mm -hmm. If I'd said father, if the, if the exhibition was just fathers matter, like, would they still be saying 
It's a social political issue. <laughs> right. You know what would I'm saying? Flagged if it was Father's Matter. I don't is know. it because it's Black Father's Matter, or is it just you know because Father's Matter? Because I don't think if it was just Father's Matter, it would have been an issue advertising wise. And like I don't like it's this strange thing where something that so seems so small and trivial that should be just a normal thing should not be so politicized, but somehow it's become such a political type issue. Yeah, no, nah, it's crazy. I love that um, you even shared that like struggle <laughs> with just like, <laughs> you know, just like, yeah, we had this great idea, you know, this artist has an exhibition titled this and I want to promote it. And they're saying it's a social issue and they don't want to let me do it on Facebook. Like that's, that's a thing that happens. Like I was not, I was, I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was shocked. I was like, wait, I'm just promoting an art exhibition for one. That wasn't like even an article or, or an ad for like some, something. It's like an art exhibition for one. And then on top of that, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that shouldn't be a social political issue being a black father. Like, you know, because right. they use, because it's something that they, and also see like from the other side being weaponized against us, you know what I'm saying? Saying that, oh, black fathers aren't present. That's why this, this, and this. Okay, but then when you say black fathers matter, oh, you now you're make, getting all political. It's just like, I don't understand. Like, what's the, what, like, what's the, you know? Yeah, no, it's crazy. And, it, and what's crazier about just like the way Facebook handles things is like that they actually have content. Like, how is the Red Table Talk, you know, a Facebook content, you know, thing? And mm. then there's issues like just, just about, you know, just, politics like I get it but I don't get it so there's struggles everywhere that I don't know corporate I was talking to Sarah about corporate social responsibility it was like an old business term CSR that was really popular yeah uh, when we were in college and, and it has resurged now because of what's going on in the streets <laughs> yeah uh, it, I think people are having a hard time with the reckoning that's happening i mean there's no other way to put it but there's certainly a a reckoning going on and i kind of want to talk, talk on that about the current events and like how kind of timely this exhibition was because at the same time like this like yeah we had covid going on and yeah there's always been issues but it wasn't at the forefront of you know the global consciousness like it is now and you just so right. happen to kind of be ahead of the curve a little bit in terms of what we were yeah. exhibiting. No, nah, our timing was strange because like this, our show almost went up at the end of April. So like, yeah. like almost way before um, protesting fact, occurred. Our shirts, some of our first shirts still say April on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, my shirt, actually this shirt says April on the back because <laughs> I got it. Uh, when we almost opened so like the concept wasn't in reaction like this online exhibition wasn't in reaction to um, the the protests and you know like Black Lives Matter um, as a uh, moniker as a, an organization as a, a chant as a you know just a statement an affirmation um, definitely was a motivating factor um, but it's not like why I chose to start making artwork like this. Um, I was doing this type of content before Black Lives Matter formed and um, my work just happens to be tied to it um, now in, in the similar timeline yeah. us and them growing at the same time. Um, but it's, it's, inter it's really interesting just like our show coming out and in, in us wanting to like really have an impact, like we wanted to say, hey, black, black fathers matter, like black male representation, you know, matters. We're not like, you know, thugs, we're not, you know, hmm. gang, gang, like, you know, like there's not all this bullshit you gotta put on us. Like, I don't, I don't have to know the secret handshake to be black. You know, I might know the secret handshake, but yeah. I don't have to know the secret handshake, you know? Like, you don't have to put these things on us. I'm, I'm a dude, you know, I'm, I'm a person. Um, so I want to see stuff. I want to see images that reflect me being regular and not just like something. I'm always standing out as something. I'm not, I don't have to try to do all that all the time. I'm cool just in my daily. And that's what I was trying to 
convey with this with this work was that you know like black men are chill we're cool all people like you know we're just cool on the daily you know if you just look at the attire um like that's why this this um uh piece was like selected for the prints and like for the t-shirt it's because it's like it's like a really just like amazing candid photograph yeah. of just like swag just like everyday swag like the dad wearing the rainbow backpack you know like mm. and, and chilling you know and 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 the, and the baby with the sunglasses she got her sunglasses on like with, with holding her own phone like <laughs> yeah, yeah. can't get more cool than that shit like and i didn't that's like unstaged unscripted like just walking down the block in Brooklyn. So uh, I think that's like real black beauty. And I wanted to like celebrate that, but I also wanted to like, you know, criticize why this isn't like a norm. Like I shouldn't mm. have to make this type of work. That's how I right. feel about all my work is that I shouldn't have to make it. Yeah. But this time it just wasn't um, violence that I was saying, you know, trying to be yeah. Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about this in like our uh, artist roundtable last week, but like what I kind of got from this exhibition and like with everything that's going on, you know, there's so many different wavelengths going on through this movement, you know, and there, everybody kind of talks about it in a different way or, you know, preaches about it a different way. But I, what I kind of got from your exhibition is like, I kind of feel like this is the way forward after you know after the anger after all this like the way forward is just making things more normal showing more humanity from that from our side and like mm -hmm. just having that proper representation out there instead of just you know leaving it up to people that don't know you know well that's like the thing is like it comes to a point where as much as we create work that tries to like highlight the the hardships and the troubles that we're facing um if we're not also making work that inspires us no one's making work to inspire us so like the people that have the ability like me um not only need to focus on their their ability and responsibility to communicate it to that like oppressor or other side of um ignorance that that might be contributing to negativity in your life but also mm -hmm to provide positivity for the people who are also feeling that, that, yeah. you know, maybe don't understand as much as you to be able to stand as tall. So, you know, part of this motivation for this exhibition was to give back that a little bit too. Right. I like, I like, I kind of like my feeling towards this, like how I feel about movies. Like, you know, we've always had the, always the black movie was about slavery about all these other about gangs about it's like yes these are necessary at to a certain degree but that's not it that's not everything like that's not our that shouldn't be our only you know uh representation out there like that's not the wars that we should only win for so like it's right. a breath of fresh air when you get like a movie like get out or you get something from somebody who actually understands the experience and presents it in a way that's just normal. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like, I don't know, I watched like The Wood the other day and it's just yeah. like the most normal <laughs> movie you could think of. Like, it's just a normal bunch of dudes that grew up together and like, yeah, they grew up in certain situations, but that's not what it was about. It's about the normality, like their friendship and this romance. And like, that's kind of the same feeling I get from this exhibition that it's like, yeah, I understand that the art showing, you know, our pain and showing the trauma, and showing the tragedy is necessary and it's important, but it's also like, man, at least we, I finally, we finally get something else out there that's not just, you know, just horrible shit, you know? Yeah, exactly. Not for real. That's like, that's a really cool metaphor because like, I remember just how I feel thinking about those movies too, like The Wood, like, like Best Man or like, uh, you know, they're just like extremely regular movies, but like with black people, like as the main. <laughs> so it like it, it's it's familiar to us because everything that's normal is normal for a black person, but it might seem weird in a like white dominated movie. So yeah. like it wouldn't translate, I guess they thought. Yeah. But then we see how you know certain things translate and become called classics. You know, like like coming to America, like was kind of 
groundbreaking. Like that yeah. shit. Eddie Murphy is groundbreaking. Get fucked that. Like, <laughs> like every movie he did, I was like, nah, never mind. Like, <laughs> like he kind of was a pioneer for that. I think what he did in movies was kind of like like that. Like trying yeah. to get something where we were normal. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you completely. And I think this is a very big step forward. And I, like I said, I think this is kind of like where things should be kind of headed towards more. Um, but I also want to talk about like why you specifically chose fathers, because you kind of talked about this in your own exhibition about your experiences growing up with your father and like how that kind of shapes you. And like, yeah. you know, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit and how yeah, you came to this. No, that's like, a big motivating factor for like the whole body of work. I mean, and it's a valid question because um, for people who aren't aware, like my relationship with my father is that we never grew up. I didn't grow up in the household with my dad, nor did I like frequently get to visit him. Um, we have like a very, I guess, minimal contact sort of relationship. Um, so I've, I've met him and gotten to see him throughout my life, but just not in a, in a frequent or like, um, I don't know, I guess recurring basis where you can almost like know certain things, you know? Um, so I guess for, to look at that and think about creating a work that's positive about black fathers might seem strange, you know? Um, yeah especially because a lot of my work is like violent or like lashing out almost seeming, but it's, mm. it's, it's really controlled violence and, and controlled like, like directional aggression. Mm. Um, and I mean, even the subtlety of this work, I, you, one could describe as, as like uh, aggressive in, in a sense, um, but it's, it comes from, just um even as a kid i remember uh all the kids talking about what they would do on the weekends with their dads like oh my dad took me to go uh play baseball in the field or you know like we went and, like paintball and you're like oh what's that you know <laughs> like and and uh you, you're kind of jealous as a child thinking oh these kids are, are making memories with this guy and like you kind of have to like like stand up and like, oh, well, my dad's in the military, you know, and that's like the only thing you know about him. Mm. Um, so then you just have to ride off of like everything you know about just that information and stuff. So that's kind of like where my childhood came from. But then you think about all the black men, just male role models as I grew up, I started to think about yeah. um, my, my uncles, you know, just older, older black dudes that were outside that they that said something you know when you're a little kid those those become your role model for that five minutes you know yeah. like uh um you know your dad when i'm at your crib like, yeah. like yeah. you know he i remember going to some trainings and and, and him kicking our ass yeah. <laughs> in the gym man but uh you know those those types of things you just remember what leadership looks like from different different men and different role models and uh you know that it's not so much just like everybody's a person. So I can't just like condemn him. I'm an adult man, you know, everything's in the past. So like, I'm not mad at my dad. I just understand the circumstances. Um, I happen to be a product of that um, uh, black dad, American dad stereotype, Yeah. Uh, you know? So like there's the black American dad stereotype is not being present in the household. Um, although that stereotype is consistently and slowly being debunked um, by efforts like the show, but also actual studies that um, have proven um, just based on sample sizes that um, black fathers spend more time like physically with their kids than um, their white male counterparts just an actual um, interaction, um, which I thought was an interesting study. Uh, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's real. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also, you know, just a lot of uh, ripple effects about just just people feeling that effect of, of you know, 
um, how much a black male, a, a role model for a man is important, but just a, a, a male or female just standing strong at the top. I picked the male role model um, for a number of reasons, but because it affects me walking outside too, just like the perception of black men um, is just part of my skin, you know? So it's almost like I wanna soften the blow by creating some art that puts us in a better light. Um, but then also looking at what it takes to be a male role, male role model and also um, celebrating the, these men that I do see around, it's like they inspire me. So it's like, oh, I, I'm capturing these images because I'm noticing, I'm, I'm becoming mentally aware once I see it, oh, that's that feeling, you know, that, that, that good feeling, that inspiration feeling that just seeing them provided. And then because I'm working on a project, I know to like pull my camera and try to get a good angle uh, but uh, and save to capture that memory. But that's like a memory that I never got to create. So mm -hmm. I remember there's these moments that you see that are inspiring, but they're also memories that you never had. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing that uh, I'm sort of working through uh, while I created the series. Right. So you think this series, like developing this series, whatever, that helps you cope kind of with your relationship with your father and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, it, initially taking the photos, I didn't know that this would be the format. I just knew that there was something about that that I wanted to just see more. It's almost like if you focus on a certain color all day, you'll see so much more things of that color. You know, it's like I'm focusing on a particular thing and I'm seeing so much more of it than I, I would normally notice in my daily life. Yeah. Um, so like that, that was like really interesting. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a uh, yeah, it just helps you sort of, um, understand, you know, difficulties I might, you know, end up dealing with as, as an older male, you know, as I grow up and, and become a leader and also just, um, the implications of continual relationship with my father and, um, how to maybe go about that better, you know, just different things that, mm. you know, I might see. Um, but yeah, all of that is sort of like what goes on and it's sort of like self-therapy. You get to sit down and, and think about these things and also um, feel inspired to be the best example you could be. All right. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit and kind of talk about like your experiences doing the online exhibition versus, you know, doing one person, things you miss, things that, you know, that you think worked better in certain searches. Like, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the digital exhibition format versus like um, the gallery um, in person format is such a different experience. Um, feedback and just the style of, um, interaction with viewers is such an interesting thing that I've like learned from through this show. Um, it's really interesting how, you know, even if you have a gallery space, like say you walk into my studio right now and you walk around and you get to look at this work, um, a person could walk in and walk out or just peek their head in the door um, maybe think they understand the images they're seeing and leave. So like that's, that timing is equally um, the same. People can do that if they see something online, but most often if they click on it, they're gonna spend more than just the head poke in the door um, to look at it. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, it's harder to keep track though of like who has actually seen it Mm -hmm. um, but you know um, that people are engaged. Um, but it's really interesting just the feedback from people sending certain messages or um, just um, certain people who've even uh, purchased a, a t-shirt uh, versus a print, you know, some people who want to really 
um, wear a piece of the art or or really identify with the statement of the title of the show and and want the shirt that you know that you have on um for like their dad or or just to to represent um to march with even some people wanted to wear them outside during these times so um it's really interesting being able to contribute that way i don't know like I feel like the programming, because it's online, just works really well. Um, being able to roll out just uh, this artist talk in conjunction with the promotions, like we can direct new eyes to the show without people having to travel to come see it. Um, mm. it, it exists the way it exists. And if someone's excited about it, they can tell someone to see it and they can see it you know that's really an interesting thing about shows it's like a lot of people are like oh i wish i saw that show or i wish i could make it um you know type of thing or sorry i missed the opening um but like with an online format there's not so much the like sorry i missed the opening or mm -hmm. you know so that's actually pretty cool um i think people are still getting used to engaging with art online um critically uh but i think that the way we've done like the markers and people having to stop and click gives them a chance to maybe look around and like actually look at the surface and instead of just the the whole big thing as one picture they start to like look at you know the texture and um the way the work is composed yeah i mean we did we tried to give you uh that kind of platform to still give like you would like you were doing the live show like you could still kind of talk directly to the viewer through your markers and through like all those little hidden elements within the images and stuff like that and I think I don't know if the responses we've gotten from the site have been very strong and obviously the numbers have been really well um I don't know about the responses that you've gotten personally from the show um you want to talk about any of those yeah I mean there's been some really thoughtful responses. Um, I, I mean, I've been invited to do um, a panel. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it, but it was about Black fatherhood. And I was really um, flattered uh, to be invited to do that. There's just been so many different things going on just in terms of the streets and George Floyd and um, all of just the brutality and the awareness of just like white privilege and and like the lack of black privilege but then um it's giving people something positive like we were saying before people wanted in times like this you know i i my whole catalog is is essentially like the images that we see in the news and stuff so mm. i was trying to um get away from that with the series and it just so happened that this was a time when um positive imagery of black people that's still sort of in that that manner of critique and, and politics was 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 needed so um one of the crazy things that happened was um, uh, jerry seinfeld's wife <laughs> like reposted yeah. uh, an image on Instagram. And I thought that was so crazy um, because she um, apparently runs a foundation that helps underprivileged um, uh, families and, and black fathers. And they do a lot of work in the inner city communities and things. So hmm. she had, I guess, been either following the hashtag or saw somebody else post it. Um, and she posted it on her site, like on her Instagram and not the story. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, so like even just like little things like that, a lot of reposts um, on day on the daily, a lot of new followers, a lot of love online just about the show. Um, there's even been a, a write up on Africana.org about um, my concepts for this show and um, the overall series of Black Fathers Matter that I've been working on, mm -hmm. um, which is actually really cool to get a write up um from a digital show um you know it's really cool there's so many like cool things about it 
Um, I don't know if people got to hear the uh, poetry elements involved in the markers, but I, I had fun um, sort of incorporating that. I thought, ah, oh, I should really add audio to this, this online show. So um, hopefully if you were able to um, search and find it, there were a couple poems hidden in the online exhibition. Hmm. <laughs> so you've said that you've like, you've still been creating and you still, still working. Uh, I just want to ask like, has any of the events like uh, impacted kind of like your creativity or like, how's that kind of gone with coronavirus and then all these other world events. And then now you have all these protests going on and like all these other mm -hmm. massive changes going on around the world. Like how's that impacting, you know, your work and like your creativity in this, in this moment? Yeah. I mean, you know, it can be depressing. You can bo get bogged down um, or not feel motivated. Uh, you know, like sometimes there's just no energy. You just, you know, to express anything. But uh, fortunately for me, my art practice involves just working through my emotions while I'm making art, really. So it's like really therapeutic just to come to the studio and um, even just sit down around my art for like, you know, an hour or two. Like there's been a couple of days where I maybe thought I wanted to come in here and work on some things and then just sit down and just look and think about stuff. And um, that's sometimes the most important work is just to get your thoughts right. Um, so, I mean, in these times right now, I've sort of just been, um, keeping with the series that is the Black Fathers Matter series. And um, there's just so much potential involved and I just don't think it's really reached nearly as much potential as it holds. Hmm. You know, I think that this small sample of, of work um, could continue to be large and, and expand in awareness and create awareness. So I've just been chipping away at adding to the idea of Black Fathers Matter just so that it doesn't fade away after me working on it for a year. Um, so with this, this work with the photography, I'm keeping that going, but I'm also keeping other elements that are, are heavily just sketch involved um, going. I actually started a new um, part, which I got a couple pieces on the side that um, I can even pull up right now, actually. Um, let's see what I got. Oh, actually, since we're up close here, this is the very first piece of the Black Fathers Matter Series 2. And um, this is sort of my experimental piece where I was trying to get um, used to cutting these portions out. You can see these elements here, but then the father figure is cut out and rendered. Um, there's just something really nice about the environment, just the space and, and these black bodies being present, normal, unthreatened or threatening and mm -hmm. just able to exist. And, um, you know, the, the, the last couple of pieces I want to show you real fast are of um, the work that I've just been doing now. This is um, fresh off the press. This is an explosive for y'all. So nobody's ever seen these. Uh, <laughs> these are brand new pieces um, that are scraps of the remaining cardboard from uh, like this big piece and one other piece that I have. So I was gonna make a third large piece with this type of cardboard, but then I decided to break them down and use them as sketch um, works that sort of combine all of the ways I use the cardboard material and um, even the labeling. Cause you can see um, it says future, of America and um, yeah I just wanted to keep that that notion of yeah. black positivity and, and black youth being the future um, 
And uh, yeah, this is the last one that I made last week. Um, but you can sort of see how I'm handling the cardboard differently, um, but similarly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you were taking photographs. It's got to be different uh, in this time period still, trying to take photographs now compared to you oh, yeah. know, before. Well, all of the figures have their faces covered now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, everybody's got masks on. It's it's a lot different. But um, what's actually interesting is I've taken so many pictures that there's like a lot I still haven't used from, you know, months ago. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if we were getting like the COVID edition, you know, Black Lives Matter COVID edition. You might get a couple thrown in my uh, Black Lives Matter Series 3, maybe. Because there's supposed to be a little bit of anim anonymity. I, I can't, anonymity? Anonymity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> involves in the, the third series where you don't necessarily see their faces. But also, okay. I do like to address um, the historical time period in which the work takes place. So um, that that may possibly inevitably be incorporated, just not so much directly as a comment on COVID, but just the circumstances of being a Black father with worldly circumstances to consider going on yeah all right uh we're gonna start winding down here soon but before we get to the last few questions i want to just open everybody up to ask questions that they want um you can do so in the chat the reach can see them and we'll kind of get to them at the end yeah but uh i i mean last thing i really want to talk about is kind of the choices in the the artworks that you that we chose for uh the exhibition Mm -hmm. and kind of why some of those were chosen. Yeah, I mean, we chose five specifically. And um, there's so many more than five. So, like, as you can see here, um, only this is the only one out of this small group that's in the digital exhibition. Um, I did want to include other works just so you could see um, physically scale wise what these other two sizes would um, look like. So um, primarily the work in the show. Um, I chose this piece and the other piece that has the same cardboard because I was really interested in the print that the cardboard came with initially. Um, it was already a part of the box, um, but with the content of um, the home, so this is sort of like a house, this image, and it's saying, um, it said furniture, but taking out letters in the word um, rendered the word future. Uh, so I was playing with that while leaving that on, and I loved it using the household and future and youth of the future, so it just worked perfect. Um, and then beyond that, trying to show different um, things that aren't necessarily in the other pieces. Um, you know, like this, this work over here has uh, a father with a daughter and a son. Um, not many of the images have uh, two children expressed or, um, you know, just well, and the stroller. So that's three essentially <laughs> in that one. Um, but there's different aesthetics. This one's more about like the style and even the posture. It's almost like they're walking down a runway. It's it's like it's it's just like a beautiful uh, situation. Each each piece has its own um, information. Uh, the the dad that has the America on his on his chest in the hoodie. That one um, I think really talks really really lends itself to what's happening even right now just like even his facial expression and kind of like living in the tri-state area and like phase two opening up and and just living your day-to-day -day life still um while all of these things are going on what that feels like and um the pressures that you know are still uphold upheld you know rich still do maybe um my income's less though, or like, you know, if I get off of unemployment, I make less money or something, you know, there's all these 
um, things that lower class people have to um, deal with that make just going outside difficult. Um, and I think that certain pictures lend themselves to celebrating um, coming out of a hardship and some of them just celebrate um, leisure. Some of them celebrate, you know, going to the store. It's just different, you know, different, different levels of everyday black life. Hmm. And also I noticed that a lot of your images are with a father with their daughter. Is that a conscious thing or it kind of just happened to be that way? Oh yeah. I mean, so the father with the daughter, it's so interesting. Like, um, a lot of the pictures that came out, um, the daughters had really cool clothes, like, like this flower and just the colors of him, like the dynamic of a black man who seemed to be like rough and tough, um, sort of, being sensitive and understanding and even like not not conforming to to black male stereotypes of, of like um you know just 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 femininity even just uh that that aesthetic embracing femininity i think are things that um help break down the image of a black male um i think that sometimes with the older black man and the in the black boy it looks like um brotherhood um depending on um how young the dad looks sometimes like sometimes dads can look pretty young and or are really young and if the child isn't like a baby baby then um the message isn't as clear so I felt like some of the photographs that I captured, and keep in mind, these are all candid. Um, and definitely I do have some um, more uh, images of the sons, but it seemed like in the photography, the best shots were of um, the uh, dads with their daughters because it sort of displayed the diversity of hairstyles, like her, her hair, with the, the berets and then just like the little girl with the, the two pigtails. There's such a different style of hair going on and, and decoration that um, pr that is every day in common that, that shouldn't be like exotic or, or surprising per se. Um, mm. You know, so, so whereas there were like a lot of like, you know, the same like sort of Caesar like haircut or like the ball cap and um, I didn't want certain stereotypes to seemingly be reinforced um, okay. by perpetuating a certain tough guy image or, or, or something like that. But also some of the pictures are just reserved for different parts of the series. So mm -hmm. like it might have been a better image for a drawing and I didn't want to use it for the photograph series. Okay. But yeah. All right. Um, you also mentioned you know, the merchandise and I don't know if you'll talk about some of the charities that you that you and we will be giving back to and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, before this all started, we were going to do an art show, um, quarantine had hit. So I wanted to make sure we donated to some kind of charity at least. Uh, so we decided to donate part of our proceeds initially to um, back to the artist. So there's the Artist Relief Fund, who we uh, partnered with, and um, we're going to donate to them as well as the um, Artist Leaders of Color Fund. And um, among others, there's been a lot of change happening uh, just in terms of like the march and everything. So yeah. we, we even added to our level of donation and wanted to make sure that uh, we targeted um, specifically black um, nonprofits as well. Right, we were gonna uh, donate to Reclaim the Block, but so much has happened that they actually have told people to go donate to other places, you know, because they've got too much almost at this point. 
Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was really cool of them to to um, provide a list of allies that uh, could use the support. Um, so um, please definitely, if you don't know who to donate and you want to donate, um, like I said, any purchase from the show does donate. Um, so like this exhibition tee, the one that Dario has, or an exhibition print um, will donate. However, uh, with the promo code George Floyd, um, you will get a discount, but it will also directly go to the Black um, nonprofits. Um, one thing I do also want to mention is that if you do go to the Reclaim the Block website and click donate, they have that list of other um, organizations that you can um, um, donate and share so that people can provide resources. Yep, and also we have, you know, we'll have links and everything to exhibition on our website. If you have not checked out the exhibition yet, you should definitely go do that. Um, but to wind things down, we're going to get to some questions uh, from Sarah. Do you have any advice for all the young Black artists just graduating from high school or college? Uh -huh. Nice question. Advice for the young Black artists just graduating. That's interesting because, I mean, these the times that they graduated in are, are strange, right? So, yeah. <laughs> I Very mean, strange. they just had a digital graduation. Um, but... I guess if I had to think back to when I was just graduating high school or college, um, you have to remember as an artist, um, you, you need to A, try to develop a language that's your own. You need to try to understand how you like to express yourself. Um, Cause you start to, the more you create, um, your style starts to emerge. And, and the more you can understand your own style, the better you can implement it in your ideas. Uh, so when you have ideas, knowing your own aesthetic better helps you better um, manifest these things um, quickly and intentionally. Uh, another thing is if you just graduated, stay involved in the art, um, in the arts, just wherever you live, you should be going to art openings when they start again. Um, if you're not, obviously right now we can't go, but the places that are in your region, I'm guaranteeing they have some type of online uh, presence and they might be putting on content. Places that you want to be a part of, you should familiarize yourself with because um, knowing something about institutions you want to be involved with is impressive. If you think about uh, any time you've been in an interview, um, a lot of times they ask you about why you want to work there or like depending on what type of institution it is, you know, say it's like, um, you know, a long-standing historical institution, like, like say, the Olympic um, training facility or something. If, if you want to even just be at the desk working there, they'll ask you what your favorite Olympic memory is, you know. And it's, so it's just like, you got you to gotta know a little bit about um, the areas and, and what's involved. But keep working. <laughs> Bottom line is keep working. Keep making work. Don't stop. That's, that's the number one advice, you know, aside from uh, having to stay connected, the, the key of all of this shit is to never stop. Um, mm. So yeah, keep making work. All right, and I'll, so last one is not, it's not a question, but I want to read it for you. It says uh, from Vanessa Dries, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say that the series is so relatable to children. When I toured the series, with my story time attendees yesterday, ages infant to seven years old, uh, the kids just look at, at each piece. They notice so many of the, of the details. My attendees are a mix of kids, black, white, Latino, Asian. They talked about literally what they saw. The dad and kids are having a great time. We go on walks with our daddies. Such a relatable series. Mm -hmm. I think that your desire for these images to showcase normal life is definitely resounding. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm sorry I couldn't join you, but I, I know that the um, 
panel was probably amazing. And I really appreciate you um, continuing to show your support. I've seen you um, since I did the Humanity podcast, sort of keep in touch with my artwork. And um, your comments are always um, extremely appreciated. And uh, they always put a smile on my face. So I thank you for being here. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, my work with uh, your kiddos. <laughs> Oh, so uh, yeah, let's just uh, wrap it up. I think that's it. I think we covered a lot of different aspects of, you know, your journey to here, your artwork, to the exhibition. Uh, again, if you guys have not checked out this exhibition yet, I strongly suggest you do. And even if you have, check it out again and share it to your friends and family. And, you know, and I think this is definitely, like she said, this is uh, the imagery that I think needs to be seen specifically in this time. Definitely. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone who came out. Uh, Ventico Wave, shout out to Ventico. Shout out Vanessa, Kelsey, Philip, Sarah, everybody that came through. Um, actually, one thing I'll do since I'm in my studio, this is the webcam. I'll give y'all just a little like walk up to the uh, art real fast. Just to, just to give y'all a little kind of like on the website how we can zoom in. Um, there's like a lot of elements that you couldn't really see as good. So let me, so this one's not in the exhibition, but this is a piece that I just wanted to show you guys here. I photographed this in Newark. Um, this is actually in my neighborhood, this little guy here. I love Mickey Mouse. I just love that piece so much. <laughs> That's actually the smallest one that I have. Um, this other one on the side was in a bodega. Um, but yeah, just to give you guys a small little, but then also behind me here, you can see I've got a piece I'm getting started on. <laughs> so the work never stops. Never. <laughs> But yeah, all right. You want to give a closing statement other than that? Just, you know. Nah, I mean, that's pretty much it, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, you know, like we said, these um, shirts are available. Uh, you can kind of see the wall text on the back. I wanted to do something a little different. So we got like the sort of wall text and you can sign. So it's a pretty dope situation we got um limited so once the exhibition's over these, sh these shirts probably will not be available so better get while you can <laughs> all right yeah thank you guys for joining uh you know we got more stuff on the way other than that just check the website subscribe do whatever yeah and again, make sure you, you follow living life fearless make sure you follow i am d hunt make sure you follow at artist d walker um and uh yeah until next time uh really appreciate you guys but yeah. um keep living life fearless <laughs> peace mm -hmm.